Hello Bowness members and welcome to this month's gardening feature and we are finally in spring now. It is so exciting, the soil is warming up, everything's getting a little bit more sunnier, the daffodils are coming out and it's a good time of the year. Uh, this month I have a lot to show you so we're going to cram quite a lot into this video uh, and the first thing I'm going to show you is an uh, instant herb garden. Now you might recognise these, these are found in a supermarket and um, these are really cheap to buy but actually a lot of the time they don't last however there are a few simple tricks that you can do that will mean that you get a healthy plant from this that will keep on growing throughout the summer so first things first they always come in this sort of plastic bag now a lot of people just remove the plastic bag and the plant just flops the stems can't support themselves i don't know whether it's a bit of a shock as well obviously going from a cool supermarket to your warm home so my best advice is to cut this plastic down gradually so i take off the top few inches and then a few days later when they've acclimatized i'll cut another few inches and then probably a week later i'll still have it like this um, and this is the point where you can then take it out of the packet so then like that you've got a lovely pot you've kept them lovely and watered now a way to tell whether they've got enough water is just by picking them up. If they're really light then they probably need a water. So next we're going to plant these into bigger pots because they've probably used all the nutrients in this pot already. So you want something that's sort of double the size. All I've got here is some multi-purpose compost and I'm just going to fill that up in there. So you just want to make sure that it's at the right height there. So then I'm just going to take this out and you've got a lovely root system there. And then I'm going to take the pot and pop it in there and then I'm just going to fill around the pot with compost. So this is going to make sure that you've got a really nice snug fit around your plant of compost. So you just want to pack it in around the sides. There you go and now you can remove this inner pot and you've basically left with a mould there and then all you need to do is pop your plant in, push it down and pack the soil around it and there you go, you need to now give this a good water. Now finally the other thing that you can be doing to keep these plants in tip top condition is actually the way you harvest from them. So especially basil, when you pick basil you want to be picking the top shoots so you don't want to take a whole stem you just want to be taking the top shoots because what happens is this is called pinching out now pinching out then promotes these side shoots to start growing and then they produce more leaves so where you've got one stem and you pinch it out at the top then that's going to divide into two stems and then you can pinch those two and then each one goes into another two stems so you are getting a bushier plant and you're also keeping it really healthy by doing this so remember whenever you harvest your herbs do it like that however coriander is different and coriander you should be picking this at the base of the plant which gives room for the other shoots to grow up but yes i would really recommend doing this because just a small amount of herbs are really going to liven up that dinner right while i've got my hands dirty i'm now going to show you how to pot up your dahlia tubers next up is one of my absolutely all-time favorite flowers to grow and that's dahlias uh, the reason why is because there's just so many different varieties and they come in so many different colors they look completely different to each other so you can create a real contrast with just one plant in your garden so this is one of my dahlia tubers and as you can see it is pretty large so this is what you'd expect after a few years of growing your tuber uh, but how you will normally buy yours is like this so these are quite small tubers but that's perfectly normal and if you can see here basically you have the stem at the top here and then these are the roots they look a bit like octopuses um, but you can either put these in water to begin with or you can just leave them exactly as they are now dahlias do not like the frost so whatever you do you need to plan this depending on what time of year your last frost date is so as i said before i am on sunny south coast so our last frost date is sometime in may so doing these in april is going to be absolutely fine it's going to give them a head start 
if you don't want to pop these into pots and you want to put them straight into the ground make sure that last frost date has passed because if any foliage gets the frost it will kill the plant so all i'm going to use for this is a pot that's just slightly bigger than the tubers you can sort of squish them in there because they're not going to be in this pot for too long and then all we're going to do is pop in some multi-purpose compost again nothing fancy multi-purpose will be absolutely fine we're going to pop that in upright and cover it with soil i'm just going to make sure it's all pushed in around those tubers and then what i'm going to do is i'm also going to leave some stem visible and this is where your shoots are going to come up from so you want to make sure that you can see them just so then you can double check whether they're growing or not but that is it all you need to do is keep water in them uh, they just need to be slightly damp they don't need to be too wet until they actually start uh, sprouting and then as i said when the last frost has gone you need to pop them into the ground with some well rotted manure as these are quite hungry plants if you did want to you can keep these in a large pot which is what i've done for a lot of my plants um, they're absolutely fine in large pots they just need a little bit of extra water now how are everyone's leeks looking so remember we sowed these sort of back late january early february um, and this is how mine are looking now so i have some pretty decent sized leeks at the moment they're about sort of lead thickness um, and now I'm just going to pop these on so what I've got for putting them on is this really deep pot you need something deep um, you're going to need a dibber and then obviously you're going to need your leek seedlings so if we just grab one of these you want to get them all apart from each other and you can see they've got these really really long roots here now which is going to be a bit of a problem for getting them in so what i do is i chop them off i know it sounds scary but i chop them off so you've got about an inch of root left like so just like that and get rid of these roots and then all you need to do is go in with your dibber do a nice deep hole and then we are just going to pop the seedling in like that so then it's just got a couple of inches of the growth showing and then i'm just going to go around in a circle and i'm going to pop them all in i'm going to give them about a centimeter spacing in between each one and then i'm going to go around in circles until i get to the middle and then what we want to do is we want to water these you don't need to push all this soil back in the water will draw all the soil down to the root base um, and it will give that lovely seedlings some room to get fatter and this is exactly the same principle for how you will plant them out later in the season so i've popped all my leeks in there and now it is time to water so as you can see the soil is just going down now these don't need anything in particular they are cool climates so you just want to wait until these get to about pencil thickness before we actually plant them into the ground and just make sure you keep them well watered in the first week or so because like with any transplanted seedlings um, they haven't established their roots yet so you just need to keep them well watered so now is the prime time for you to be sowing your seeds there's so much that you can be sowing right now outside you can be sowing your carrots and your parsnips and then in an unheated greenhouse you can be doing things like your cabbages you can do your leafy greens your salads your herbs um, there's fennel there's celeriac there's celery there's absolutely loads that you can be getting on with and then indoors uh, in a couple of weeks time i will be sowing things like my squashes my cucumbers and anything that needs a little bit of heat before the end of the frost so just a few things to remember is don't always sow the whole pack of seeds and um, it sounds quite logical because basically you could end up with your cat knocking over the seeds uh, you could end up with forgetting about them and they dry up or they go leggy so you always want a reserve of replacement seeds just to ensure you against any accidents the other thing that I'd always say is do look at the seed times on the packet but also look at your last frost date. Here is my wildlife area so this is just a little space that I've got at the back of my greenhouses here um, 
and I've got my wildlife pond here which I built a couple of years ago and I've got some frogs eggs which is very very exciting um, and what I normally do with this area is I put some wild seed down so I am going to clear this area here and then I'm going to show you how to sow your wild seed. So as you can see I have cleared my area now so all I've done is I've gone through it and I've got all the weeds out and I've given it a good rake over. I haven't dug into this soil at all it's just rake to loosen the top surface. Now this ground was completely left to its own devices over the last summer and then during autumn I didn't clear any of the plants I've left it all there for the wildlife to cover under over winter and I'm also hoping that some of the wild wildflowers that I sowed last year would have self-seeded, fingers crossed, but if not I have picked up a packet of seeds. Now what you're looking for when you want to buy seeds for bees, butterflies, things like that is they normally have a little symbol on them that's got a butterfly or a bee. Um, and it does mean that they are going to be beneficial to the wildlife so this one is nature's haven so you know that says everything so all i'm going to do is i'm going to sprinkle these i'm going to do them really evenly so not too deep densely either and then i'm going to be using my stepping stone so i don't tread on anything so i'll do that now Now a little tip, if you have really clumsy fingers or whether you're doing this with children, you can mix your seed mix into some sand. And just give those seeds a fine rake. Now if there's one thing in the garden that drives absolutely everyone crazy, it is slug damage. And slugs are a real big problem, especially on allotment sites where we've got so much lovely food for them to eat. There are quite a lot of methods that you can use that are more eco-friendly so I wouldn't recommend using the slug pellets because they can be so dangerous to other wildlife. However, there are a lot of other methods that won't harm any other wildlife and sometimes don't even harm the slug if you really want to be that eco. So one of the first methods is a beer trap and this is my favourite. It is basically a couple of inches of lager. You can try bitter in there. Some beers work better than others, but I always just go for the cheapest. Um, you want a couple of inches in a jar. Now, some people bury the jar, but I wouldn't re recommend this because then other wildlife can fall in without knowing and slugs can really climb. So there's no problem for them to climb up this jar. So all you want to do is hide it somewhere where you think you've got a problem, leave it out, and within a couple of days you'll have a pile of slugs floating in the bottom so they basically climb up falling get very drunk and then can't climb back out and drown in the beer i mean it's not a bad way to go really is it but that will improve all of your slug damage now the only thing about beer traps is that slugs can smell the beer is actually the yeast in the beer they can smell it from quite far away so if you're in a big allotment site like I am, you might end up attracting everyone else's slugs onto your plot, so this might not be the best method for you. Now, there are barrier methods, so this doesn't harm the slug whatsoever. Out behind me, I've actually topped up this plant with some shells. So these are broken down shells that you can buy, um, and that basically is a horrible surface for the slugs to walk on. You can make your own if you've got some chickens or you eat a lot of eggs, you can dry the shells out in the oven, crush them all up, and you can put little circles around your plants. There's another method which is with wool. So you can buy wool pellets and again, pile it up around each individual plant and the slugs won't like to climb over that to get to your tasty plants. I have found with wool pellets, you need to really, really put a lot there. So it might not be too economical if you've got a big growing site. And then the other method is with copper tape. So you can apply copper tape around all of your pots and they won't like to climb past that. I haven't tried that myself um, and it is costly if you are doing it on a large scale. But if you've just got a few plants on your back balcony or on your patio, then it might be a good option. Then there's the third option, which is, I can never say it, nematodes, nematodes. They're basically a tiny little insect that you water into the ground in spring 
um, and they're a parasite basically and they feed off of the slug and kill it. Um, so you can just buy them in packets offline, they come in sort of a little powder, you have to keep them in the fridge and then when you want to use them you just mix them with the right dilution of water, water your plants, water the soil, it's absolutely 100% safe. Um, and then you let them do their thing. You do have to do it a little bit more regularly. I think it's every six months that you do it, so yeah. They are some really good methods for getting rid of slugs in your garden and protecting your crops that you've worked so hard to grow. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I have absolutely loved making these videos and I hope that you all have a successful growing year ahead. If you do have any questions, as usual, please head to the Boundless Facebook page and write your questions in the comments.